I'm very excited, very excited to see that the, the alumni has been, have been extremely happy and excited about this global gathering. And as you see in the room, it's a truly an international gathering with 220 participants from over 44 countries with uh, 140 alumni from over 30 countries across Africa. This is truly a celebration. And it also, it's also a strong signal that we all share the responsibility for finding breakthrough solution to Africa's development. I think I can say with this excitement that uh, this is the beginning of the Africa's Renaissance celebration. You've got experts from all walks of life. You've got experts from business leaders, entrepreneurs from across the country, academics, researchers, and that truly is what we needed because we want to provide alumni with a broad range of exposure to what is going on across the continent. And you listen to our keynote speaker talking about how you take uh, natural resource uh, from raw material to final product. And you see the, what he's talked about, the lateral linkage, which re requires uh, mathematical problem solving skills. It's also fabulous. So I just wanted to mention that this is paving the way for something that is upcoming. I, I think it's uh, realistic. And let me say why. You know, if each country in Africa has to decide, uh, were to decide to build its science base, even one AIMS institute by, by country wouldn't be enough. So it's, uh, yes, there are gonna be challenges. Challenges in terms of resources. Challenges, and when I mention resources, I talk about funds, and human resources. Yes, there are going to be challenge, challenges in terms of you know, how we fit into the local higher education system. You know. But beyond the challenges, I think I see more opportunities for Africa. Take this, imagine this for instance. It took 5,000 physicists to work on the discovery of the Higgs boson. You know, the critical mass of students is the one we're going to generate in the next, uh, by 2021. So if you imagine that critical mass of alumni, well-rounded mathematicians, you can see the transformation of Africa because once we reach that critical mass of math problem solving skills, something is going to change and it's going to change forever. It's only the natural resources that have been attractive to the whole world. Now has come a time, and with natural resources, if you only base your economy on raw material, you're, there's no value additions. There's not much you're going to gain from just exporting raw resources. If you want to maximize you know, the return on investment, you have to invest in transforming raw, raw materials into final products. That's where you get raw uh, final products and value addition. And the reason why it's uh, so important, it's because you need high-end skills. And when we talk about high-end skills here, the first thing you think of is mathematical sciences, which are key to any modern economy. So it's uh, very reasonable uh, to plan for Africa to have high -end, smart investment in high-end skill in order to get enough of a lot of value addition uh, in, in its raw uh, materials exploitation. I just wanted to mention this, that, uh, you know, it's obvious, math has always been key to understanding the past and transforming the future. Africa has reached a stage where its development will only be sustainable if only Africa invests in high-end scale. There will be no Facebook without logarithms. You know, without uh, trigonometry, there will be no pyramids. Without calculus, there will be no bridges. So you wonder, on this continent, we need a lot of bridges 
So how do you do bridges? And then you have to import mathematicians, expat, expatriates in, onto the continent. And Africa is sp spending a huge amount of money on paying for international expertise. It can grow homegrown scientists on its own. Homegrown scientists open to the entire world, Ho wo working in full partnership with other scientists from across the world. But the time has come, and now is the time for Africa to take a quantum leap towards becoming a global player. And the only way you do that is to invest in science. The magic thing, I would say, is the culture, the learning culture, the learning environment they find at Ames. Most of them have never found that kind of environment in traditional universities. An environment in which women are empowered, feel, feel empowered to do science. Women are not discriminated against. That's the environment they found. They found a conducive environment where the lecturer is just a facilitator of the whole learning process and where students are, 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 are trained to become independent thinkers, you know, critical thinkers. It's the only way of getting them to be problem solvers. So that's the magic they got. They got three things. The learning environment, the conducive learning environment, the culture of AIMS, and the independent thinking process. I tell you what I uh, observe when I go in here is this: is the multicultural aspect of AIMS is like no other place that I, no other education institution that I've seen in South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess you, the same could be said for a student in Egypt University. Yeah. They're also unlikely to get the same multicultural environment. Mm. That uh, that must be something yeah. which lives with students. Exactly, yeah. exactly. You're correct. It lives with the student, that multicultural environment, forever. First of all, most of them come to Ames from the uh, home country with no idea what they're going to see of what they're going to see at Ames. And when they reach Ames, here they are uh, in the presence of over 30 nationalities. We've got now uh, 40 nationalities at Ames, including countries like Somalia, Libya, Mauritania, Gambia. You know, when you see you in that environment, it's enriching, it's uplifting to be talking to people that you would never have talked to if you hadn't been at Ames. And it's not just a Pan-African uh, aspect. It's not just the Pan-African as aspect of multiculturalism. It's also a global multiculturalism that we are promoting here. Because you are Ames, you see 30, 35 lecturers visiting Ames each year. And all of them come from different countries. Australia, Latin America, Brasilia, uh, Brazil, um, uh, UK, uh, the North America, uh, Europe. So you name it. They come from everywhere. So it's a, it's a, a Pan-African, but also a global network that all of a sudden, a student who's never been exposed to more than two nationalities is exposed to 50 country, other countries in the world. And it broadens his mindset, his thinking process, the way he or she sees life. And it helps him a lot in his learning journey. And particularly in a on a continent like Africa. Exactly. And the private sector is a great employer of yep. AIMS students, yep. private and academic sector. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, are they playing enough of a role in driving this process of developing maths and science skills? I think th the private sector could do much more than what they're doing now. Uh, I commend them for the progress they've made. But I'm, I'm suggesting that going forward, AIMS has a program which we call the AIMS Industry Initiative. The objective of that program is to bridge the gap between mathematical sciences, between science and industry, providing uh, skills uh, relevant to industry uh, in terms of helping boost uh, industry capability and then helping find uh, solutions for industrial issues. So it's something that we're working on 
uh, and we will be broadening our, the scope of our partnership with the, the private sector. I would say that in the next three, five years, you're going to be witness to uh, a number of initiatives that we'll be implementing with the private sectors here in South Africa, in other countries in Africa, and globally. We're going to be working on internship programs. We're going to be working on industrial uh, PhD. Uh, we're going to be working on having our students who are not interested at this stage of their life to go into academia or go on to reading their PhD, to go into industry and be able to be employable. So the private sector has a huge and fundamental role to play in that sense. Yeah. Jerry, I think that's fine. Okay, great. I, I hope you got yeah. what you want.